Hey, buddy. Well, hello, my beautiful YouTube humans. Today, uh, we're actually gonna be DIYing a watering hole for my critter best friends. You see, not only do I have best friends on my property that aren't my dogs, such as this desert antelope squirrel named Thorman that comes to my door to feed every day, but Callie has best friends that are fish, freaking ablaze. My lab has best friends that are turtles, and I just need to bring water to the desert and make a designated area for my critters and my dogs. So let's restore the pond on my property and make it a puppy pond. You guys, I'm not lying when I tell you, this dog is obsessed with fish. We have to bring her a pond. Okay, we got two types of dogs, folks. <laughs> we got Blaze, who loves the turtles, and we got this woman who's trying to jump with her saggy grandma booty bulldog having ass into this mini pond to get this goldfish. You good girl. That look is like, you better get to work. So this is what we're working with. We need to get it to a workable state. That is what episode one is all about. You see, ever since bringing water in for us humans, it makes me feel really bad that I'm not catering to the critters that are living there. If I'm changing the ecosystem so drastically by renovating it and just moving stuff around, I need to make sure that I'm making a safe haven for these guys. Not only do I want to just be catering to the critters because that is what my previous owner did before me, I want to pay homage to the previous owner as well. If you don't know, because why would you know, his kids actually backpack these rocks individually during I think the summertime, I could be completely wrong, and they hand cemented these into this now is what I call the party pad. It just has everything that I could use to entertain. These are all hand placed, all hand poured cement. So I'm keeping it, restoring it, and showing it some love. You better believe it. Man, and as I was standing here on this little like cement pad, I had this wild idea to DIY a doghouse on this pad for Callie and a dog deck. Because look at this view. I felt like such a classic dad this day. Man, I was just beating things down, ripping out this bridge that didn't hold any type of weight anymore at this point. I'm gonna build a new one, I'm gonna leaf blowing. I just was cleaning up the yard, if you know what I mean. And then the best part was I pressure washed. I love a good pressure washing session. It makes all the difference. listen to the words coming out of my mouth. If you are afraid of pressure washing, and that might be a weird sentence, but if this machine intimidates you, don't let it. It's so easy. It's way easier to use than it seems. That might be kind of weird to say, but sometimes people are intimidated by tools. I just really don't want you to be. Pressure washing is one of my favorite things to do. Cute. everybody meet Christy Christy meet everybody she's one of my wild women that came in for the weekend we were gonna do a workshop we got stuck in the sand we had to save the baby bird she wrangled a snake and now she's fixing my plumbing we were trying to figure out where the water was coming from I have a, a secondary line that you need to turn on to get the water to come to this pond I don't want that I want water to be available to come to this pond at any time huh Look at that. I genuinely think this just connects to the sprinkler because I'm going to count off. Yep. Please don't be connected to the main water. I'm nervous. I'm nervous. Oh no, oh no, oh no. Okay. No, just residual water. Okay. It would be gushing. Gushing. Something I have learned when it comes to PVC work though is you always want to prime it. You want to use the primer every single time and you want to use that red hot glue or that blue, it's blue. Red hot blue glue, I forget. But it's a duo pack you can get at Home Depot. And when you are connecting PVC, make sure you are using both. Let me reiterate. I wonder, what does that mean it's gonna leave? Ooh. Bring this line over to there. <laughs> 
Gosh, there is nothing like having a wild woman with me on a hard day of work and or just a hard day of life and being able to sit at the end of the day and enjoy a sunset and decompress and realize just how lucky we are. If you're anything like me, the more options, the better. And Scentbird is my monthly go-to subscription service for my fragrances because I am able to play around and switch up my scent with over 600 options over on their website for just 17 bucks a month. They offer the best designer and niche fragrances on the market, which are selected by their top team of experts. If you don't know what your scent is, they have an insanely helpful quiz over on their website that will guide you through and then give you recommendations at the end. I really enjoy the protective colored case that these bottles come in because I'm a clumsy lady. And also, I don't want to waste the perfume. I love the lock and the unlock feature. And when I opened it up, I was pleasantly surprised with what the bottle looked like. It was so pretty and the amount of perfume within each. A mama bird is trying to teach a baby bird that I've been saving for three days how to fly right now. So if you hear it, that is what that is. But I wanted to pop in and I'm kind of talking low and also my voice is gone. But I wanted to pop in and talk about some of my favorite, some of my favorite, some of my favorite fragrances. Let's talk about Mind Games from Jadot. It's one of my favorites. It's almost my everyday. It's a little bit on the sweeter side. It's like a perfect scent for date night and it's kind of funny with the title. There's like mandarin orange oil in it. There's also like vintage leather, like this musky perfection. Next we have the Exotic Essence by David Yerman. Now, David Yerman's fragrances have always kind of just been in my rotation, but this one in specific is a more clean, scent. It has patchouli, lily, and rose, vanilla. It's very musky, but again, it's oddly clean as well. So this is my everyday. Where do I want to pour this? My date night. Bo by Lee is again, one of my favorites. These three are just uh, my rotation right now. This is going to be a more like warm everyday scent versus David Yerman's. I think that is more like of if you want to smell clean. This is like a little daytime sexy, if you will. It has incense and vanilla bean and tobacco leaf. It also has redwood pine notes as well. And again, this one is more, uh, if I could put it in just like what it smells like, it's like you're literally like running through a forest in the most gorgeous dress. More of like a mysterious scent in my opinion, and it's the woodiest out of the three. So those have been my go-to, and I've linked them down below for you as well. On top of being able to just choose a different scent every month and not having to commit to a full bottle size, it comes directly to your door. What can get better than that? If you guys are interested in checking out Scentbird for yourself, you can actually head on over and get 55% off your first month by using my code living to DIY. That is actually about $8 for your first month. You can click the link down below or even scan this QR code that's popping up on screen. Thank you so much to Scentbird for sponsoring today's episode. Let's jump right back into the DIY. Well, these glasses are dirty. Um, so. I need to build a bridge. That's the next step. So I'm going to go ahead and do that in this windstorm we got going on. I've never built a bridge before, but I want to build a little bridge for Callie to go over and go to the dog house that will be on the other side of the pond. Um, kind of like the mansion of the lot, if you will, that will renovate a little bit later. Uh, but I've never built a bridge. It seems pretty easy. It just needs to hold the weight and what was there before you know, with cement and stuff, but let's just replace it with wood. So maybe it will clean up that area a bit. Cleans glasses and the smudge doesn't even come off. Anyways, the reason also too, I want to make a nicer bridge when that does not collapse when you start to walk over it is because Callie is such a fan <laughs> of like hovering above water. When I used to live where it had like a jacuzzi above a pool, she would like hang out right on this like edge of it overlooking the pool all day long. And then when we're at Lindsay's, she just lays directly next to the pond. So I just think giving her like a house up on the hill of the pond and then a bridge moment for her to like sit on top of and look out on the pond is something she'd thoroughly enjoy. But also we could completely do this com DIY and make it beautiful and she would just walk over and be completely unimpressed. I would have to get fish. Again, never built a bridge before, but let's get started, shall we? So I forget, I don't. Yep, this is eight feet. So I got two, two by eight by eight, which means these are two inches thick, which isn't the true thickness. They're probably gonna be a little bit thinner than that by eight inches wide, which that's also gonna be false. This is actually seven inches wide, and then it is eight feet long. But the edges are not square, uh, but that doesn't matter for us because we're actually gonna cut this into like uh, a little bit of a hump situation to create the bouge of the bridge, if you will. 
I'm just gonna freehand it. I'm not gonna get crazy. To make this bridge, I really just did it in the most simple way possible. Those wider pieces of wood, just so I'm not like throwing out measurements and you're like, what piece of wood is what? The, the widest piece of wood. Those are gonna be the walls of the bridge and we are gonna use that jigsaw as you see to create a curve. Instead of trying to guess the curve to be the same on both, I'm taking that excess piece and flipping it, put it on the tail end and using it so it can be as close as possible. I just trace the first piece onto the second piece and cut that sucker down as well. Now obviously I'm not cutting them super perfect. I didn't really have the right blade in my jigsaw if I'm being honest, I should have been better about that. So I clamped them together as tight as possible and I just took my time to sand them down because even though my property is like desert chic, a little bit janky, disheveled, like disheveled, even though my property is like desert disheveled chic, I do want to make things look a lot nicer. So if I don't need to look too modern because that's not gonna go with my property, I'm not doing something like that. So I'm not trying to make the perfect bridge. That's not my goal. I say that and then you just see me eyeballing in the craziest way. Right here, I didn't measure because honestly, I just eyeballed it and marked where each piece was gonna go and then pre-drilled the holes for the screws then to put the middle supports. I literally didn't record any of that. Why am I the worst? I just put um, a two by four, which is 33 and a half inches in between these two guys, because together these guys are three inches. I need the bridge to be 36 and a half inches wide to fit snugly. So now we just gotta add in between supports. Okay, I mean, I don't know. Like I said, I've never built a bridge. It looks like a bridge frame. I mean, the walls are not curved up with the bridge framing and like, because I am going to be building the sides out to be like little overhang eateries, if you will, for the critters and things to get a little bit cooler to be above the water instead of like being on the bridge. That's my goal. Hand on my DIY Bible. If I wasn't about to surround this bridge with florals and greenery and trees in the upcoming episodes, I would definitely fix this bridge, but you will not see that corner. It'll be so insignificant, so I just moved forward. Don't judge me. To tie the spaces together that I am doing, I used this Advantage Lumber Ipe decking in the cowboy area, and I'm using that for the bridge. So we're pulling those warm tones, right? And when you're visiting these spaces, they kind of seem familiar and connected throughout because you really want your whole property to feel just like a cohesive storyline. What was throwing me visually was right here, these walls not being curved up as well. And again, that's because I'm gonna build out little like overhang restaurants with peanuts and different kind of bird feed in them. Because I am holding off on bringing the main water line over here, I just plugged in a hose from another area, but that post that you saw earlier that's right next to it, like right in front of my body, that's gonna hold the hose that plugs into the pond to turn on the water feature when needed to refill. All right, well, we have a water feature, which is incredible. It works. There are a couple of leaks, so I'll have to look into how to fix that because the pipes are like beneath the cement. And then I just need to rerun the water because there is a hose option over here, which would be nice to have so I can start to kind of garden over here. But we have a little pond. It's so nice to hear water in the middle of the desert. Something that I love about this, right? I want everything to be a moment to get to everything. So you'll be like walking, this will be flowers growing in. You step in some moss, you come up on the bridge, you walk over, you step down in the moss, you come over here. This is the doggy deck, it will go out there. Doghouse, seat right next to it. You don't wanna chill with the dogs, you wanna barbecue? Perfect, come on over here, have a fire. It's just all like little moments. And then this view is just the sunset view. Let's actually head to LA real quick and go to the dollhouse tour with Lindsay because I miss my best friend and I need her. 
And then you get a little sneak peek at what we're going to decorate with the tiniest home makeover next episode. <laughs> my cover photo for my thumbnail. <laughs> I'm such a model. Oh my god, literally. Oh, I just got to I just got to Lindsay's house and she literally built this uh dog bed for my dogs and they don't even know what it is and they just walked in and started using it but this is over on her channel look at this and then when you come over here eventually when she places it because it's just going to be too heavy there'll be fish in here because just like this episode that i'm doing for you guys here this damn dog is so obsessed with fish that we're literally building stuff that doesn't exist for this animal to view her fish We got, we got little shoes. We got, is that a saw? Mm -hmm. Oh my god, so everything just Box comes saw. miniature. I sold six houses to one set designer this is on TV. And do you do them yourself? Oh, yeah, I've oh. done over 500. Of them. Holy crap! Yep, oh, I have I, that one. You do? Yeah, I'm gonna build it. Okay, I'm good. Hey, okay. now you saw how I got in here. Just be real careful so you don't do it to trace. Okay. I have to help her. Okay, which, perfect. You know how to do it. Yes, you okay. If you come, they fall okay, off. Okay, I won't. I won't. Okay. Thank you. You're giving me okay. control of the machine. More circle through that Dr. Pepper sign. And then I also back here is my sales table. I love you guys. I can't not put this in the episode. Hi. Okay, this is definitely not a clip. I wanted to. Oh, it's okay. Okay, it is just lovely. Here she comes. I literally was just saying I can't put this in the... I was just saying I was going to put this in the episode. Who are you on the phone with? Me, watching my own stories. <laughs> I am my own biggest fan. I gotta so I, was, I, I popped on here to say, like, I can't not put this in the episode. It's 12.49 a.m. And I just needed to see if she could find the two chairs. Oh, I did find the... <laughs> It was like, she's going to come in. She's going to have the two chairs. I'm going to show you all things miniature. We're wrapping up this episode. Do we have the chairs? It, it's just, it's dirty. I it's love the dirty the chairs. Okay. I want, yes. no, but do you have two dirty it. chairs? Not too similar. So we got a dirty and we got a new. Can we not? <laughs> Let's not, do it. I think it'd be kind of funny. Let's do it. Who's whose chair? I'm the dirty one. Okay, so that's my chair. You're clean. Wait, I want to rub it around the dirt. I want to. You want to go dirty, dirty it? Team? You I'm want to dirty it to bring it back? We'll come right back. <laughs> okay, hi. Why she does that? I'm literally editing right now. Um, and I just wanted to take a second to just say thank you guys because we're in a fun transition period going into the house. I've already done a couple things in the house and I have a lot of plans for it. Um, and it's just given me this new, this new breath. You know, like even just revisiting the cowboy pool was fun because I feel like I'm such a different woman on the property entering the home renovation. And doing this pond renovation has me like discovering this soft little side of me that I didn't know I loved. Like for instance, I had no idea I could love a paint pail and a little paintbrush so much. You know, I have little brooms, gardening tools. These are so cute. They're literally metal with paint pail and make it look like we're doing a project live on the outside of the house. Like favorite favorite is the hose. This is my most favorite one. It's a bug off and it's metal and it has a little tiny brass top. It's actually like heavy too. Let me get this straight. You just walked in here. You Instagram storied about the dirty chair you were gonna give me. Oh my God. <laughs> so you have evidence of where it's at. So oh, she walked back in here with the clean chair that we gave her and then the dirty chair she Instagram storied, she can't find. <laughs> that was the front yard though. We're in two different places now. <laughs> I have a lot of ground to cover. Yes. Okay, I got this. I feel like I know. <laughs> can't find it. No, I just got so tired, I can't. Uh, I love you guys. I hope you enjoyed the episode. Stay tuned for all things miniature next round. That was such a fake bite, but I do love you guys. I'm just exhausted. It's now 3.33 a.m. And I just had to show you. She's gonna kill me. <laughs>